Hey there, and welcome to Play Noggin. I'm Julian, your brains player too. Portal has left a mark on the cultural landscape the way few games can. The game featured puzzles that were as clever and original as its story and humor, and despite it being a tiny game bundled with other big titles like Team Fortress 2 and Two Thirds of Half-Life 3, the story of a girl and her portal gun took home a boatload of Game of the Year awards. It was so good, Valve decided it needed a full-length sequel, and if Valve can revisit Portal, then so can we. Let's plunge in to Portal 2. Portal 2 tells a longer story of Chell and her chief antagonist, GLaDOS, a murderous artificial intelligence who has gained sentience and learned how to lure humans to their deaths with promises of cake. It's our one fatal flaw. AIs are favorite villains in video games, but they play the heroes just as often, sometimes even in the same game, like in Portal 2. Game designers can't seem to decide how they feel about AI, and to be honest, neither can some of the greatest minds today. Physicist Stephen Hawking and guy who wants to corner every future industry Elon Musk are just two among the many who are concerned about the potential for AI to go sideways if we're not careful. AI has the potential to go wrong because unlike a normal piece of software where every line was coded by human hands, AI can write its own code. It can teach itself based on what it's exposed to, and that can go awry if we're unwise about what we show it. Back in 2016, Microsoft created a machine learning project named Tay designed to talk to humans, taking their inputs and slowly learning how to reply back to them. The goal was for Tay to learn to communicate like a human based on how humans communicated with Tay. Unfortunately, Microsoft put Tay on Twitter. I think you see where this is going. After 16 hours, Tay had to be shut down because it became too racist. To be clear, it's not really Microsoft's fault. Bless them, they thought humanity could be trusted not to turn robots racist. This is why we can't have nice things. Likewise, GLaDOS's murder spree is just a result of what she's learned from the data she was given to work with. Apparently, all that testing equals deadly neurotoxin. So Hawking and Musk aren't anti-AI, they're just advocating that we're smart about how we manage it so we don't go down a path that leads to our destruction. Simple precautions, like not creating autonomous weapons, that sort of thing. Yes, I know the turrets are cute, but we can't afford the risk. These are important considerations because we are just now taking our first baby steps to developing artificial intelligence. And in a small way, gamers helped make it possible, particularly PC gamers. Now, don't get too excited with the PC master race comments, guys. This is how we make racist robots. Anyway, if you've ever built a gaming PC, you know what sets your rig apart from the computers most people use for writing essays or browsing memes is the addition of a graphics processing unit, or GPU. GPUs work differently than central processing units, or CPUs, the chips that serve as the computer's brain. CPUs can only handle a few software threads at a time, executing them one after another in a sequence. GPUs, on the other hand, can handle thousands of threads at once, executing them in parallel. They're good at taking tons of data and using it to run calculations over and over again, lightning fast. This makes them perfect for running all the demanding operations modern games use, like calculating how light reflects off a companion cube as it falls into an incinerator, all at speeds that won't make you throw your keyboard out the window. But this parallel computing nature also makes the GPU ideally suited for training AI. When creating artificial intelligence, instead of rigid, human-written software, programmers create a neural network or software that loosely mimics how the human brain works. Neural networks are comprised of thousands or millions of nodes that each perform a simple calculation. These nodes are densely interconnected like the neurons in your brain, and when they receive data from other nodes, it cues them to run their calculation. If the end number is above a certain threshold, the node fires and passes on the signal to other nodes. Again, much like how the neurons in your brain have to be excited above a certain threshold to fire. This process is called deep learning because the neural network Network actually teaches itself, but it's a little slow on the uptake. A neural network needs to see millions of examples of something to learn what it's supposed to do. So, for example, to train it to recognize what a face is, it needs to see millions of faces. Making a CPU run a neural network that needs to perform millions of simultaneous calculations would take forever. Making it do those calculations over and over millions of times would take forever squared. But that's not the case for the little card in your gaming PC. In 2011, researchers discovered that just 12 GPUs could deliver the same performance as two 2,000 CPUs. They made CPUs look like a potato. Suddenly, you didn't need a computer the size of an entire building to teach AI to recognize what a cat was. Considering GLaDOS is the size of a building, she must be one monster GPU. She could probably run Crisis. Coincidentally, 2011 was the year 
Portal 2 came out. If you've been following PC hardware, you know that 2011 might as well have been last century for GPUs, and the leaps and bounds in graphical performance have also opened up AI's potential. Now, major car manufacturers are gearing up to build autonomous vehicles that use GPUs to understand their environment and learn how to navigate it. And computers are creaming the best humans at games way more complicated than chess. But if you're feeling inferior, just remember these neural networks are still comparatively simple. They're only trained to do one thing very well. They don't have the versatility to do all the things humans do. To achieve that, we'll need a better understanding of how our brains work. And we may need to map out the whole thing, all 86 billion neurons, before we can mimic it with a neural network. When we do, though, theoretically, we could create an AI that does everything we can, but better. Or one that's exceptionally dumb, like Wheatley. We could master artificial stupidity. Or we could create a neural network based on an individual's brain to create a digital replica of them. We might have to kill them to get a good look at their brain, but that's the price of immortality. With a powerful GPU running a huge neural network, Cave Johnson could make sure that Carolyn is married to science forever. Hey, thanks for watching. If you can't get enough Portal, check out our episode on how the Portal gun could work here. If you like this video, subscribe for more. We'll give you a cake. And don't forget to keep on testing.